Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV, a weekly show highlighting Standard & Poor's analysis and global perspective on the latest credit market developments. I'm Jeff Sexton for Standard & Poor's Financial Institutions Ratings. I'm joined by Mark Trench, Director in Standard & Poor's Insurance Ratings, to provide an update on the proposed changes to insurance accounting standards issued by the Financial Accounting Standards Board, more commonly known as FASB, and the International Accounting Standards Board, or IASB. Mark, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jeff. Mark, to start off, let's kind of summarize uh, our viewpoint on the proposed changes to the accounting standards. Sure. So to, to recap what our positions were, we, we generally agree with the proposals that are out there. Um, we, we do also acknowledge the issues that uh, constituents have raised about it. Uh, we, for example, we, we agree with probability weighted cash flows, updating your assumptions, uh, discounting the uh, insurance liability, um, and including a risk adjustment. However, you know, baked within that is uh, the discount rate that was proposed. We did not believe that would accurately reflect uh, the nature of the liability, and many constituents agreed with that perspective. Um, there's also a modified approach, which is very similar to a short duration model, which we did agree with. However, it limited the contracts that would be subject to that, and contracts such as health insurance, uh, which is traditionally a short duration product under the proposals, would not have been included in that. Mark, this is a topic we've been following for some time. It's one we discussed at our most recent insurance conference. Um, so what has changed since the initial proposal, since we put those views out? Sure. There's, um, there's actually been changes to the proposals and changes that are outside of the proposals that will affect uh, <laughs> how this project moves forward. So first, the changes in the proposals. Uh, the boards have been working really hard. Uh, if you look at what they've decided to date, there's a lot more fleshed out as far as how do you do, you know, they've, they've actually come up with a discount rate that is different from the proposal that um, is more in line with, with what constituents wanted or suggested, uh, and it fleshes it out quite a bit more. Uh, both boards agreed on that. They've also fleshed out items such as uh, how to release the composite margin um, as uh, the uh, approach that's supported by the FASB. Um, they've, they're in pr the process of talking about fleshing out the risk adjustments and what methodology and how you go about applying that for the approach that the ISB uh, supports. However, as you probably noted from my discussion, there still are major differences that exist in the measurement. There's a one margin approach that the FASB supports, the ISB supports a two margin approach. Um, with respect to DAC, there are significant differences. Um, the FASB supports uh, deferring acquisition costs that relate only to successful efforts, whereas the ISB would not make that distinction. So there still are some differences that have to be hammered out in the next couple of months. Now, as far as the things outside of the actual proposals, um, as of June 30, there had been turnover at the International Accounting Standards Board. Um, three of the departing members were three of the largest proponents of the insurance contracts project and help to uh, push it along. One of them <laughs> happened to be the chairman. Um, there is uh, one insurance expert on the board currently, um, but uh, what you have is the insurance contracts project is not part of what they call the MOU projects, the Memorandum of Understanding. There's about five or six major projects that must get done. Insurance was identified as a a very important project, but it's not an MOU project. Um, so to the extent there's resources needed for those other projects, you know, there's a chance they'll be allocated to get those done first. So, I mean, th those, are, those are sort of the things that are happening around the project and um, things that would affect its, its uh, eventual completion. So even with all these activities, and it would be safer to say the proposals are more in the flesh now, um, there is still some work to be done. So what does that work to be done, as well as those outside changes, mean for timing on this project? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good question. Uh, you know, it, the, the way they have it set up is that once these proposals are completed and the final accounting is issued, they're going to give a three-year period, sort of a, uh, uh, you know, to get 
used to the uh, the new standard to actually apply it to have three years worth of data on a consistent basis so you know to the extent the project could gets pushed out a few months, you add three years on it to get to, okay, this is when it's going to be implemented. So you have that kind of, you know, being factored in there. But there's also, um, you know, there's, there's still a number of issues that have to be addressed um, in a short amount of time. Uh, at the beginning of the summer, they had uh, delayed a number of projects, including the insurance contracts project, which, ha which had a June 30 end date. Uh, now, when you look at the timing, um, it appears that it's first half of 2012. So um, I, I think there's still some room in there because, you know, six months, which when is it actually going to come out? Uh, but, I, you know, I think in part they're hedging themselves because they have delayed the MOU projects I mentioned as well, and in at least two of them they've decided to re-expose them. Now, the three years that you are talking about that would be added on to the end of the project, is that considered the field testing? Field testing, I know, is something we find to be very important. Can you talk to us a little bit about our feeling on the need for field testing, and is that part of that three-year timing? Yeah, the, the three-year timing would actually be final document. You know, the, the, the theory is you'd have a final document, and then it would be applied. Uh, the field testing should occur prior to that document mm. being finalized. And, uh, you know, that's something that we've actually, uh, you know, many constituents have asked for. We support having field testing involving investors. Um, this is a major overhaul and change to not only how you measure insurance contracts, but wh what's disclosed about them, how they're presented. So uh, we, we generally feel that you know, th there should be some testing done so we can actually see how this works, how it responds to different market conditions, things like, you know, does it respond properly or the way we thought it would, things, things like that that would help sort of ease the implementation. So what does all of that mean going forward? I think it, it's uh, good news and bad news. I'll start with the bad news. The ba bad news is it's going to take longer to get a consistent set of accounting standards for insurance contracts. And, um, you know, for many analysts, especially um, European analysts who rely on supplementary information to a certain extent uh, known as embedded value, uh, you know, having a set of financial statements that are from a common set of accounting standards, it, it would be great. It's a, it's a good starting point for the analysis. Um, it, it definitely has its benefits. However, you know, the reason for the delay is they are fleshing out all of the fine points. Um, they are taking the time to uh, make the standard much better and answer a lot of the questions that constituents had raised. So, like I said, there's, there's good and there's bad to it. You don't want to rush it, but you, you want it done. So while there's a lot of work that has been done, there's still quite a bit to go and still a lot to take into account. Um, with that, Mark, I'd like to thank you for providing this update on our view of the standards that have been put forth, the proposed standards put forth by the Accounting Standards Centers. And from all of us here at Standard & Poor's, thank you and take care.